Hi everyone, this is Manchester Gaming, and I'm here to bring you another Dot Auto Chess Queen Guide today. So, today we'll be seeing another high rank replay, and I'll go through the replay with you guys as before, and this is a different part of the guide. As you can see, this is a rank 5 plus game, and we have BSJ here playing with us, and I'll be playing him in quite a few games today. So this is actually one of the replays I play today. And it's a quite interesting replay, so I thought I'll make this as a part of the guide material. So to introduce this particular guide, so what we're looking at is I have discussed more in details about the goblins and how we're rolling for goblins. And recently I have thought about what to do, what are the adjustments that we can do with goblins. What can we be open for during the mid game or even the late game? Because we don't want to be stuck onto goblins. We want to have more varieties. We want to be opening for more combinations than just goblins. So what's going to happen in this game is I'm going to be showing the replay as I go. I'll go through my thought process of what I was thinking and what was going through my mind. Why am I keeping those units and how am I going with each of the steps? Hopefully this helps and let's start. So we started the game and keep in mind there's some music from the background from the in-game because I was streaming this game and the recording had the music from the background. I have minimized the music so it should be not that much louder. So we start with goblins and I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. The second round we didn't get any goblins and on this round because I was playing with PSJ with one of my outs and last game we had someone who was running elementals that was really funny to watch so what I decided was I was like let's try some elementals so I checked to the elementals down and I was like no I'm gonna pick tiny Tony and I'm gonna run razor morphling and tiny as three elementals and just for those and what's gonna happen is on the third round let's have a look we get the goblin trial again the game is basically saying hey come back to goblins and I'm a little annoyed I want to get the tiny but I know I'll be losing really hard for this game I want to play with everyone so I don't want to throw the game so I had to pick the goblins and the game was so generous they actually gave me the trial so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip a little bit so pass this and by the way as you know I have one of some of the most terrible item energy and we I think we only got one item this time from all three rounds where some people almost got a refresher on the fourth round I'm gonna buy a few units hoping that we get any combination so this is the first turning point I would say this is a time when we see two draw ranger at one Arbiton now something I want to highlight is in many of the games I played if you get a draw ranger and Abaddon in the early game they're actually not that strong because one Star Draw Ranger or even two Star Draw Ranger plus Abaddon really requires more things that does physical damage to make use of the minus armor, which minus five armor when you get two undead. So during this whole entire round, I was planning to see if I wanted the Abaddon. What I wanted to see if I can win the round. If I can't win the round, the plan is to sell three units to buy the Abaddon and don't worry about the Draw Ranger because I can't afford it. If I could have, I would have bought the Draw Ranger. Or even a tinker so now I saw the tinker because I already have a tinker I really want another tinker because this way I'll be quicker to get a two-star tinker and what happened was as you can see I'm gonna pause here we saw the draw ranges we got two more draw ranges and you know I wrote again because that's a part of the guide I was speaking earlier that there's a higher chance of getting one star and two star when you're rolling at round four I'm still rolling for goblins because I want to keep my early game as highest win rate as possible and each round I win, regardless of the win streak, I'll still gain one additional gold. And because we're early game tactics, we still want to win the early game. So what happened here is I got the 2 star tinker, but it, this is very minimal. I put the anti mage down. What I recommend for us to have a look is Yes, Abaddon it, it is a stronger unit than anti mage, but what the anti mage brings in this small skirmish is that he can mana burn and he can counter any enemy demon. People love to have demons on the board, and the mana burn is rather, re very relevant at this stage of the game. So, we're going to be fighting someone with a surprisingly strong hunter lineup. I thought we ha I had this round, but turns out they had us. So, I'm going to skip a little bit. And this is the second turning point. We got our second Abaddon. 
And the downside is 12 Abaddon's at the very start, they're very nice, but they eat away a lot of your gold. And if they eat away your early gold, you can't be rolling at round four. And it's likely I'll be looking at a losing streak. So this is something I want to show you guys as well. So I'm going to skip a little bit. So now we're facing people with demons. And because they have a stronger two-star unit and a warrior ox energy, we're going to lose this round as well. So I'm going to skip a little. And Lycan just says, you know, you don't need that 2 HP. I'm going to take it away from you. So yes, this is the second part of the turnaround, I think. I saw two Queen of Pain. Right now, I can't fit two Queen of Pain on this round. And it was really annoying to watch and I really have to decide what units I want to sell. I'm, I, I'm happy to sell the Tinker. And right now, I can see that I have a Clockwork that's down there and I have two anti majors. I really want to sell one of them, or not sell any of them if I can win the round. But knowing how weak I am currently, because my only two star is a Tinker, and Tinker is one of the less preferable unit. So over here, two things. I want to win the round, so I don't have to sell units. I also want to lose the round to get a losing streak. Turns out we won the round. So I bought the Queen of Pain. I'm going to skip forward a bit. Oh yeah, so I'm going to go back over here and let's show you guys what happens after the round ends and when the new round starts. So I was texting to them because I played with them a few games, so we kind of were chatting with them. So we got the Timber Soul we're looking for at the start of this round, which was very nice. To keep up with the rolling, we saw a Tinker. And now this is, this, this hasn't come to me, but I was considering what units I want to bring to the board. And I can see the mini knight. At this point of in the game, I am still very much relevant with the goblin combination. And the only time I will put down the Abaddon is when I get a uh, Necromancer. So Necros undead, the four star purple undead. So right now we're fighting. And because we just lost our losing streak, this is terrible for us. We're losing again after the break of a losing streak. And Luckily enough, one of the three pairs or the one of the four pairs we're holding actually showed up. So right now we don't need any demons because Queen of Pain, to, in my opinion, is one of the nicer demons by AoE damage. And because we're holding four pairs, the chance of getting anything to two star was very likely. And if we didn't get anything, I might have rolled around level five just to get a two star. Because we lost the losing streak, we want to be winning, or at least holding on to our health, because that's going to be very precious. Again, we can see how strong anti mage is. My anti mage is hitting his anti mage, while his anti mage is hitting my Tinker. So the real difference breaker here is my Queen of Pain. The AoE damage is, I think, 150 at level 1 after the nerf, and it's 6 seconds. So most of the fights, she gets 2 or 3 nukes off if she's positioned correctly. So one of my favorite two-star unit, other than Beastmaster, is Queen of Pain at the moment. Simply for her low cooldown and great burst damage. Now this is one of the turnaround rounds as well. I already have a Shadow Fiend, so I don't need it as a Shadow Fiend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the Shadow Fiend. I'm going to sell the Axe. I'm going to buy two Lunas here. There's a few reasons why I did this. Because I saw the DK, and, and I also saw two Lunas in this round as well. Although I don't have a Dragon Synergy, right now, any pairs I can match up will greatly increase my chance of winning the fights. What What is happening right now is, let me pause for a second. Actually, I'll let the game keep going, we're just fighting neutrals. What is happening in this game right now is, we just hit round 10. Usually at round 10, this is, the Golems are basically... Uh, a sign saying, hey, if you're not saving, you better consider to be saving. And there's two points of saving for most of the high rank matters. Is that you want your units to be strong enough that you're not losing too much while saving. And if you are winning while you're saving, it's great. So what I have just recently discovered or planned to do is I want to be winning while I'm saving. To do that, I need two star units instead of any value one star unit. So right now I was open, so luckily enough I'm going to pause here. I got another Lunar, and because I was open to any 2-star that I get my hands on, 
instead of trying to get the additional one gold interest by selling most of my units in the storage. So I was able to match one of my pairs, and this time it was the Lunar. Now as you can see, I have two elves, and what I'm going to do now is, although I don't have any synergy at all, at all except the max synergy of health regeneration, yeah, I also got the clockwork at the moment as well. So at this point, I want to take the Luna out because the synergy is so much better because of the goblin buffs. I'm going to skip a little bit here. And majority of the fights, our main source of damage dealer is the two-star Queen of Pain. And she'll be doing a lot of damage for us. And as you can see over there on the left-hand side, the Queen of Pain did 116 DPS, while the second highest was Timber So. So what is going through my mind is I know for a fact most players are saving. I'm looking around to see what composition they have and if they have demons. If they don't have demons, I'll take off my anti-mage. If they do have demons, I want my anti-mage to be positioned in such a slot that he will be likely to burn the enemy key unit. For example, over here, I think he's burning a Medusa, which is very nice because it's at one stage it's very squishy. At the same time, my Queen of Pain dealt a lot of damage in the back line. So two things to keep in mind while using Anti-Mage. You want to be burning the right target by moving Anti-Mage onto the same slot enemy unit is set. If enemy is on slot 3, you want to move your Anti-Mage on slot 3. If the enemy is on slot 4, you know, vice versa, you go to slot 4. So also, if the enemies, most of the players doesn't have, I'm going to close here as well, go back a little bit. If the, if the other players doesn't have a demon, you might want to take out anti-mage if you have a better two star to replace him. But below round 15, anti-mage is very relevant, especially when you have the goblin buff. Simply because anti-mage can lock on to one target, sometimes that could be a key target like a long druid, uh, Conquer or a Doom, and he can lock on a target for a really long time before they kills him. So what happened here is, this is round 13, and as I said before, I know that everyone is saving. I can stay at round level 5 and keep try to save from this stage, but what I have in my storage, as you can see, I have a 2-star Luna, and having a 2-star Luna will greatly increase my chance of winning each round. Now. Some of us might be wondering, hey, isn't it better to be saving as early as possible? It is better to be saving, but you want a balance. You want to be saving while you have a high chance of winning each round, unless you're running a losing streak. Because I'm not on a losing streak, I want my highest chance of winning each round. Because not only do I get one gold, I can also get into a winning streak. So I'm going to go back. So I'm going to be spending five gold to level up to level six, and that's what I'll be staying. That's why I will be start saving. So I started saving after round 13, and that's a bit delayed. Usually most people started saving around round 6, oh no, round 9, and even round 10 afterwards, because they really want to make advantage of the golems gold. Because golems, if you're saving 10 gold on the golems at round 10, you get additional gold. It's very minimal. What I prefer is to have a solid lineup before I start saving now. So we're going to be fighting. And because we have some of the six strongest units, and Luna with bounces, she bounces five units at level two. And because we're fighting people with only five or six units, she is incredibly strong at this early game. I sold my Razor. I was thinking if I get a two star Razor, it would be really nice. But unfortunately, I didn't get her. And at this time, I bought another CK, despite the fact I already have a Queen of Pain. There's two reasons why I did that. I already have a Dragon Knight sitting there, and I already have two Abaddon sitting there. And the draw range is already two star from the rows. So right now I'm missing one Viper to start the Dragon lineup. And also I'm planning to transition into the Knights as of, as of now. Let's have a look. I have two Abaddon waiting, one CK, one Luna, and one DK. As we know, four Dragons are usually very strong in the mid game. We can have up to six dragons, but that's what I feel that we're that's what I feel that we're missing some of the damage. So that is why I'm using four dragons instead of six dragons. Because Batrider and Omini Knight are the other two knights we're missing. Let's have a look at the fight. 
So we're winning most of the fights. We're winning most of the fights and we're looking around to see how much people are saving because we really want to keep when the power spikes are coming. So I'm looking at the enemy builders and most of them are saving about 20 ish gold and currently I'm on 18. So this is a nice round. At the same time, this round took a lot of my saving. So we got the Viper, we got the DK, we got the Puck. We already have the Dragon Synergy. And I was thinking of putting them on, but there's no way I can put them on because I have to take up three units that are cool units, that, that are crucial units that's much stronger than one star DK, one star Puck, and one star Viper. So what happened here is this round depleted some of my savings because of the Long Truth and the Viper. And we also I also forgot to reverse placement, but we're strong enough to deal with the wolves anyways. So as you know, we don't get any items usually. We got one item from five wolves, which is very low rolling for me for the past two days actually. So we started saving after round 13. Right now we're at round 16. We're still saving. So I'm going to skip a little bit. So what I'm going to summarize is because of our six units, we have managed to win each of the round after round 13, after I got my six two stars. And we started winning simply because, not because we have a lot of synergies, but rather some of our units is very units. Luna is able to do lots of damage with the goblins tanking in front of her. It's as if I have the knights tanking for her. But instead of this case, we have goblins tanking. So what happened there was we have won each of the rounds until round 18. And this is the round. And I was wondering whether I want to level up. But seeing how we have been winning each round, I got a little greedy. I wanted to get to 50 gold, which we managed to get to. This is round 19. At this point, I know as a fact most people are level 7. And I have two choices. I can spend 15 gold to level up to level 7. And the only units I'll be placing down is a Draw Ranger, maybe a 1 star Abaddon, or maybe a 1 star Long Druid. What I was thinking is if I were going to lose this round, I'm going to lose regardless if I have a Long Druid. Sometimes Long Druid can change things, but a 1 star Long Druid is pretty hard. So I'd rather take the risk of losing this round and losing my streak instead of spending 15 gold. And it turns out we happen to be running into a person with a hunter lineup. So at this point, I was a little, a little puzzled whether if additional laundry would have saved us over there, would have saved the, the winning streak as well. But because I chose the more greedy pathway, and I think a friend was watching me while I'm streaming at this part, he's like, you're too greedy on this round, which I agree. Now, something I want to highlight is I'm round 20. We let me go back so over here we leveled up to level seven just simply because of the savings we saved up so we got another viper so although we're not at 50 gold we're pretty comfortable in terms of economy and health at this point so something i want to highlight and something i started doing with most of my ranked matches is that after round 21 i will level to level eight regardless of my amount of saving so here over here as you can see, I'm leveling up to level 8. There's two reasons why I did this. Why is that, as I mentioned in previous guides, that we have, I'm going to pause here, we have knowledge of most people save, and when they save, they tend to be spending after the neutral round, which is round 16, round 21, and round 26. I want to be hitting my spikes, and I have practiced spending my savings on round 21, and it has worked out for me very nicely. First thing is we're matching the power spikes with one of our own. Second thing is we're opening ourselves up to any legendaries that we roll into. I'll actually be spending some gold to be trying to roll into any good units. And even if I don't, I can already put more units on the lineup. And this is the point I swapped my dragons for goblins. And also I got some money back by selling them, of course. Now let me describe the position and why I have each of the units here. So I saw my anti-mage simply because he has fallen off because he is no longer the the bruiser that can lock onto a target for a long enough time, but rather he becomes let me pause over here. 
he becomes something that dies too quickly because we don't have any we don't have any elf synergy with him for the evasion he dies too quickly to bring us any value to the table my position over here is that my team was at the very front and the queen of pain is next to the team puzzle. what this will do is the positioning on Positioning of a ranged assassin in the front will enable the assassin to stay where the assassin is and she will be actually auto attacking the enemy that's in a range instead of jumping into the enemy backline. Now, this is a good reason why I want this. I want her to be staying with my night ball and I want most of my AoE damage to be right here where the Timber and the Queen of Pain is going to be attacking. Let's have a look here. Yes, I know the Queen of Pain is not the best tank over here in this case, but she did do a good deal of nuke damage right off. And that's the nuke damage we actually needed to take down those trolls. But unfortunately enough, this I think it was a 3 star Shadow Shaman, and this DK was not joking around with the buff. He smacked all of us down. But notice how, although we lost the fight at round 21, people might be saying, hey, you spent lots of savings to get to level 8 and you still lost the round. But yes, I did lose the round. But in this current matter of games for us higher rank players, even if you lose with less health, it's still acceptable. It's better that I lose gold instead of health at the moment. And as you can see, I'm currently on the highest health at the moment. Simply because I have tried to use methods to lose less health. Right now I'm keeping another druid in search of a long druid. Because if I do get a long druid, I'm really well. Let me go back here. Let me go through my ideas. Right now I'm sitting on 50 gold. Instead of waiting for the next turn and probably lose the next turn, I want to match some of my pairs. Right now, let's have a look. We have one Abaddon pair. We have one Viper pair. We have one CK. We have one Long Druid. The Long Druid can be matched up with one Long Druid and that will bring us a power spike. So we want any pairs that we can find. And we search once. We searched again, we got the C case. So we got the C case and instantly I can replace the Queen of Pain. And now I have four knights. Now you might be wondering why I didn't I do this earlier? Although I'll be getting four knights synergy on the table when I sell my Queen of Pain earlier, a two star Queen of Pain brings more damage to the table compared to the defensive capability of four knights. Because right now we need enough damage to burst the enemy down instead of trying to tank up. Because we have no damage dealer, our DK is only level 1, and our Luna is only level 2, and it's getting less re relevant. And that was a very nice roll. While I was talking here, I have kept rolling, as you can see. I kept rolling a few more times, and I got Abaddon as well. So right now we have 3 of our knights 2 star, and the Timber Soul is 2 star, and also a Draw Ranger. I really do want to swap out the Draw Ranger. So as you can see over here, we did a solid amount of damage right off the bat and the downside is we couldn't sustain enough and the enemy player is running dragons with a 2 star DK with mages so they actually burst us down before we get to them let's go forward a bit so right now there isn't that much change and what I'm doing here is again I know I'm on level 8 and things won't be changing for a while I could be rolling again but Let's have a look at my unit composition. I have a Timber Soul that's my frontline tank and burst damage. I have the four knights that I won't be changing. I have one on dead that I won't be changing until I get a Lich or a Necro. And I have the two dragons I won't be changing. So if I am to spend gold to be rolling for more things, I'm looking for one Viper only that can bring to the table. Anything else I get now, even if I get a Tide or Medusa, I can't fit them. Because if I put a Tide there, this Timber Sword is actually a better tank and a better de damage dealer than a tank, uh, than a Tide. So even if I get a good Legendary or any other good units, maybe if I get a Lone Druid, but I'm only aiming for two units if I'm rolling. And instead of rolling, what I'm doing here is I'm waiting for my XP over here. I'm going to move this. I'm waiting for my XP to hit four. Once we're at multiples of four and we level up, we're saving five gold because once we're at 4, what's going to happen is it's going to be round 25. And after round 25, we'll be at 5 XP. And that's what I'm planning to level to level 9. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to pause here again. 
as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to hit the power spikes of each round after the neutral round. This is because we're matching the other players in terms of power spikes. We're also finding the best ways to maintain as much health as possible. What I find is round 1 to 10 is when you get your combinations. Round 10 to 20 is when you get your savings. Round 20 to 30 is when the game filters out the players with a lot of health and the players with less health. Of course, you need good combination of units. But around 20 to 30 is when health is the key here. Because most players actually lose the game between round 20 to 30. The moment they realize they're too low on health, they actually start to panic. But if you can keep your health low, or keep your health lost low each turn, even if you lose, it's still acceptable. So you're actually on a steady decline with a losing streak from round 20 to 30. That's still acceptable. So we're going to be fighting people again, and this time it's the same mage guy, and I think he defeated us here again as well. So as I was saying, it's took okay to be losing, and we lost 13 health. Because we're sitting on high health because of spending, it's still acceptable. And here, this is round 25, I'm going to be banking on 50 gold, and I was texting him saying, when did this become the acceptable range of health, because I'm round 25. I have 50% health. I'm actually pretty glad compared to most of the other players. So we're going to be defeating the neutral monsters with ease because we have a Viper. This round we start with a Long Druid. So right off, I know what my unit that I will be adding on is going to be a Long Druid. What I don't know is if I get anything better than a Long Druid. We saw one DK. So what I want to see now is if there's anything better. But at the same time, I just got an additional power boost. So I want to be testing, basically seeing how I match up with other players before I spend more gold. Right now I'm on 30 gold. I'm willing to spend all my gold on rolling next turn, not saving at all, if I lose this one. Because I know if I can survive any extra round from now onwards, my chance of staying top 4 or top 3 is very high. Notice how the positioning of my long drill is forward. I also want to him to be taking most of the damage and get his bear off as early as possible. It is a bit risky for him to be this forward, but if he was backward, by the time the match finish, he might be doomed or he might be stunned and he just dies. I want him to have the highest chance of summoning the bear. And as you can see, there's a doom here. I think if he was backward and hit him from the back line, range attack, he might have died from the gyrocopter condor or get doomed when doom gets charged, which is very quickly. So in this case, he got a bear off, as you can see, he got a bear off one split second before the Doom doomed him. So that was something that I think I was planned to do, which was very successful. And I think with the help of this bear, or maybe we didn't need the bear, we managed to win this fight. Because majority of his damage is burst damage, and knight combinations are really great against burst damage. Because we have the divine armor, which increases our magic resistance and physical resistance randomly. Now. I am winning, so let me pause here. I did win that fight, but why am I rolling again? I am winning, I know I'm stronger, but look how many units I'm looking. I'm looking at one Viper, I'm looking at one DK, and I'm also looking for a Necro or a Lich. So I'm looking for at least four units, that's why I'm rolling. So remember the thing I mentioned earlier, that right now we're actually exchanging gold for health. This is a priority. We want to stay on as much health as we can. And fortunately enough, we got a Tide and we got a DK. So I, oh, we also got a Lich over here. So I instantly sold the Draw Ranger in exchange for the Lich. And we also upgraded our DK. We also got a Goblin Techies. What I want to highlight is Goblin Techies does physical damage with his bomb which is 700 at level 1. Now, if we have anything that reduces physical armor, his bomb actually does close to a thousand damage in terms of before armor reduction, but even after armor reduction, his bomb does 22% more damage. So it's a great way to burst down the enemy. And I wasn't sure with the position for the techies, so I also put, that, put back the launch route. So right now, I want to see if the techies can get the bombs off. And it just happens we got silenced death. Literally, there was no saving us except the Lich Ultimate. And this was a, this was a Zoo player with the Lycan and the uh, Long Druid. So 
I always thought we were going to lose a lot here, but fortunately enough, we had a lone druid that tanked up for us with his bear, and our Luna DK actually managed to clean up. So, although we might say we have four knights already, we don't need any tanks. What I find is, if you have a solid damage dealer like a DK two star, a lone druid two star is really helpful, even at late games, because when the RNG procs the bear roots a target, the target is disabled for three seconds. Over here, I'm not very inclined to be saving to 50 gold again. What I'm looking is, I'm looking for a Viper. I found it. So I'm going to pause here. I was sitting on 28 gold before I started looking for Viper. 29 gold, actually. The only thing I was looking for is a Viper. I might be too start tired. So why did I roll on this regard? Is that I know a Viper actually bring a higher power boost for me. And I know the gold I have right now won't take me to 30, uh, won't take me to level 10 unless I can survive. So I am still spending to roll. I'm buying units as I go, simply knowing that I can sell them to match up my interest during the game. So this saves a bit of decision time whether I want the unit or not, I just buy them and think about it after the round starts. We got a viper we're looking for. Now if we win the match, we're sitting on 20 gold. If we lose the match, we're sitting on 19, so I plan to sell the Enchantress, or even Abaddon. Now, one of the reasons I didn't put down the Tide instead of the Techies is that I feel that we're tanking enough, and we just need more damage. And I really want to see how we match up on this one. We got silenced, and Techie got silenced and called and died. So this is the second time the Techie didn't do anything. And this time, we wasn't fortunate enough to win the fight. But I think we were fortunate enough to only die, I guess, 4 units, which we only lost 7 health. So when I say we only lost 7 health, notice how a majority of the player over here are very low on health. I don't think this, I haven't been playing a lot of the pub matches, just queuing up with randoms, but I have been playing with a Discord group. So currently what I'm noticing with the meta is most of the players are running really low on health. And this is the point you really want to stand out. You want to conserve as much health as you can to be staying on the top three. So I decided that Techies wasn't going to cut it, so I sold him for Tide, which I might have, should have, might have done earlier. So right now, what I'm looking for is the Medusa. I want the magic resistance, and I want the controlling from the stones. So we're going to have a look if the Tide gets it off. And if he doesn't, we have to move him or adjust. Let's have a look here. We see the time. It's very close to get things off. And the DK killed him. So this is why I feel like, hey, maybe the Tide had a good chance. And because we won this round, I'm not that inclined of changing my matchup, my positioning that is. In case we meet the same person, we have a good chance of beating him or staying alive. At the same time, my, kite, my Tide was so close to get the Ravager off, I think it's okay for him to stay there. We found a Necro. Now I'm going to pause over here. A friend of mine said Necro is better than a Lone Druid. For me personally, a 2 star Necro provides a burst damage and a healing. What Lone Druid provides is another frontline tank. Both works pretty well with Knights, but personally speaking, I, I like the Bears more than the Necros because Necros require time to be casting and Necro require mana to cast. Half of the time Necro is not taking damage, the other half of the time Necro is silenced. So I feel like when the Laundry gets his bear off, he's more valuable than the Necro. But if Necro stays not enough for two healings, he's much more valuable. And also he's level 1, so I prefer my level 2 Laundry. So I'm going to skip here a little bit. We did get two very nice items, one Demage and one Hyperstorm. I'm giving all my good items to the DK. So I'm going to pause here for a moment. Right now we have reached level 31 and on this round I want my power spikes to be matching up Even I want a higher power spike than everybody else. I'm leveling to level 10 where everyone's still sitting on their savings Yes, I know I'm depleting my savings and I know I can be rolling or I can be doing other things But looking at my board, I have a tide that's level 1, a pax that's level 1 and a, and a lich that's level 1 Everything else is level 2 it's very hard for me to get them to level 3 because that requires 6 more units. 
So I don't think I'll be getting a tied a Lich too often anytime soon. And I really don't want a two-star pack, which I'll explain very soon. So here I'm getting a artificial power spike, despite the fact I could have waited just one more turn for Wang speed and save five gold. So I wanted any legendary, any power spike, and seeing how techies didn't work out earlier, I decided to go for a tide. And my logic was if two tides can't do it, if one tide can't do it, maybe we try two. Let's have a look. So right now we'll be facing players with only nine units. And this is the time we have a little advantage if any of the tide gets a ravage off. Oh yes, so before one of the tide died, he got his ravage off. And I think that was the difference maker, whether if we survived or we died. And now I'm actually selling all my units to buy the techies because I knew I won. And with the additional victory gold, I bought the techies. So this is the plans for the late game. Right now we're reaching level round 32. The plan for the late game is to get a 2 star tie, is to get a 2 star lich, to get a medusa, or just get the techies on the board for a bit of damage. Now, two reasons why I went into level 10 this quickly and start rolling all my gold is that for those that didn't know, there's only 10 legendaries in this entire pool of game. So if anyone buys a Tide Hunter, the chance of anybody else getting a Tide Hunter is reduced by 1 out of the 10. So they can only look for 9 of the Tide Hunters. But having some of the legendary units early, I'm actually increasing my chance of getting, I'm reducing the enemy's chance of getting any legendaries they want. Because we all want the same thing, Tide Hunters, Liches, and sometimes Techies. I'm reducing their chance of a Legendary, and also I'm guaranteeing my spot of the Legendaries by locking them on with me. And also having an additional unit on the board, even Legendaries like those, really helps with the closer fights. I am going to swap the Tide because I noticed the Tide that was sitting where the Abaddon was sitting never got the Ravage off. So I decided to keep the Tide that's down there and also have a Medusa on the board, just for the magic resistance. I don't think a level 1 Medusa will be doing enough damage or will be surviving long enough to get her stone gaze off, so I'm just having her there for the magic resistance. Right now BSJ is doing quite well actually, and afterwards he chatted with me, he said he wanted to go knights as well, Knight, knights and dragons, it turns out he saw me and this other guy, I think, error for, for doing dragons, and he realized he was too late on it. So he decided to go undead with mages. So he had four undead and mages, and <laughs> we're discussing how he was doing a DPS mage lineup. And right now I'm still rolling. I really want to find the legendaries I'm looking for. And at the same time, here I am questioning whether I want a DK or a long druid. <laughs> I made this adjustment simply because I was thinking if I get a second DK and I put him here a two star DK I have one on the right and one on the left so I'm thinking what are the chances of me getting into the long druid and after a bit of thought I decided to sell the long druid and buy the DK which I might say is not the best decision making at this point but it's something I'm hoping to bank on and I switched the lineup. What I want to say is two things. Now, as players reduces, you'll be facing the same player over and over again. Not only that, if you lose someone in a matchup, you should definitely be changing your arrangements. For example, over here, my DK did a great job of cleaning up, but he still lost to two dragons actually. Which is quite shocking. But luckily enough, over here, Arrow 404, which defeated us with two dragons, lost because he wasn't sitting on enough health. So right now I'm looking for a lot of things. I'm looking for a Lich, a Tide Hunter, Medusa, DK, or a Lone Druid. Which a Lone Druid did came. And because I have sold my initial Lone Druid, I'm less inclined to buy it as a Lone Druid. And because I have spent my time rolling instead of rearranging, I think I'm at the risk to lose again over here. Yeah, one of the problems I'm having playing on the Discord channel is that we don't have any Australian servers, which I'm currently in, and that's why we I have quite high pain playing anywhere in Southeast Asia or even in the US. 
And now, as we can see, Lich is a great unit when protected because Lich takes time to get its mana up. And once Lich got mana up, the Ice Plus actually does the chain for force actually does great damage. And when you're defending, you won't be bouncing onto the enemy bench line, which is like a bug currently that's happening. When you're defending, the channel force not only does great magical damage, he also stalls the enemy massively. It basically delays any attack for two seconds ish, and that's really great when you're facing a lineup that requires a DK to be hitting, and a lineup requires anything to be doing some damage. So what's happening now is this is a neutral round. I'm looking for one 2DK, looking for one Medusa, one Tide, or one Lich. Now because of my excessive spending, I have managed to keep my health high enough at this point. I'm looking around to see what most players are. Let's go back over here. Let's have a look at each player. So I'm looking at BSJ over here. And I think I'm going to go... This player is sitting on 9 level 9 with 51 gold. He could have level 2, level 10 at any point a few rounds ago, but he's basically using his interest before he gets to level 10, simply for the efficiency sake, sake and the income. But for me, I think at this point, health is more important in terms of priorities. I'm going to kill the dragon, and I don't think we got anything decent over here. Maybe a blink dagger. Ah, we got a plate mount, which is nice. So I'm going to give it to the DK for additional tank ability. And also for a chance of a high pistol. So over here, although we're sitting on 5 gold, I'm still rolling. I rolled once for Tide Hunter, and the only unit I can sell for enough gold is actually the Dragon Knight. And notice how over here, I got the Tide Hunter, instantly I'm putting the Tide Hunter from the side position to the front position. Because the two-star Tide Hunter doesn't require any items, he will get his Ravage off when he is the only one that's subject to attacks. Let me show you what happens here. Let me just describe what I'm planning. I'm planning to see an entire concave of attacks attacking this Tide Hunter. Because they have to get through to him before they hit any of my units in the back line. So what's going to happen is all the enemy units will be jumping over. Some of them will be hitting on this side, some on this side. But most of them will be hitting the Tide Hunter. And because he's level 2, in 90% of the cases, he will get his Ravage off. So this is one of my Knight Ball position that I'll use until I lose a massive fight because of silence or because of the enemy initiation. So let's have a look at this fight. We can see he's got a level 1 disruptor, which is very nice. And I'm going to pause here. Two things I want to explain. One thing is the position of the tide, which he's likely to get the ravage of. Second thing is I'm sitting at one star park over here. Now, this was done purposely for two reasons. One is that a park that gets his ball off, we don't want him to be doing a lot of damage because. His first, first ball is his dragon full of mana. He's going to cast the first illusionary ball. And this ball is going to charge up the enemy with mana. If he does more damage, he still won't be able to kill the enemy. But it's as if he's, he's like a battery pack for the enemy. We don't want to be giving the enemy too much mana at the start for the late game. Because if they get it first hand, if they get the silence off before my tide do, I'm actually going to be very troubled. So over here, my tide managed to get his Ravage off before the enemy. Let's have a look again. So again, the park is going to ball and the Tide actually got the, the Ravage off before the park even balled. So Tide took one second and he got the Ravage off. And that was perfect positioning. So everything followed up perfectly. And each round that I don't lose, the matchup will be even better for me. Because each round I don't lose, it's likely the other other players are losing to each other because we're so close. Let's have a look here. Again, we want the Tide to be get, getting his Ravage off as quick as possible because we know what's going to happen is the Viper is going to hit a random enemy and the Park is going to shoot up a magic ball. The ball is going to charge up mana for the enemy. So does the Viper. The Viper won't be killing the enemy at this stage of the game. So the Viper is also charging up mana for the enemy. 
so we really need the upper hand or the first initiate here we got it first initiate again our dk managed to pop the two star disruptor before he got his hands off and i think that was key in this fight as well oh versing this guy i think he's got a three star ck as well and although he's got a three star ck our leech with the chain of frost and enough unit synergy we managed to defeat him and this is the time I see two long druids and I know I should be looking for my long druid. Oh, we should be looking for the rest of the druids. So let's have a look at this fight again. So I think a lot of the friends on the stream were asking me about late game strategies. I made this video before the late game strategies because I'm still in the process of looking at how the late game replays. And so what I'm going to touch on is the late game positioning. Yeah, I was commenting on how much my DK did in terms of DPS with the Hyperstone. So late game positioning, there's two things. One is that you find something works for your particular group of units. Here I am making a night ball or ball of units for two reasons. One is that when my Dusa gets her stone gaze off, which is very rare, all the units will be looking at us. Second reason is, this is the best positioning for the Tide to get his Ravage off, given that he's level 2. Now if he was level 1, what I'll do is, I'll have him in the middle, have two units next to him, so that he's su su subjecting to one instance of damage melee, and maybe one or two from the range unit. And with some items, maybe he can get the Ravage off. We're only positioning like this because I know, for a fact, the Tide can get his Ravage off before everybody else. This time again. Because we got the Ravage off, we have a two second window for the dragons to be casting from the full mana and to be clearing at least one or two key units. So right now we're looking around because we know we're winning the fights. We want to see how each of the players are matching up and what are they saving and what kind of compositions they have. So we're very fortunate to find two of the druids we're looking for. So right now Long Druid is three star. And I'm still rolling for Lich or Dusa. Gonna stick it to the fight over here. Now you can hear a little bit of the music we're playing in the background. So again, this positioning. This is a troll player. Two things with troll player. It takes one second for the instant hacks to go off. Now if in this second my tie managed to dust his ravage we're actually delaying the instant hex or we're actually dodging it. Now on this one we're actually we were hexed over here. Our Siki got hexed, but it was okay because one of our Kush units wasn't hexed. By Kush unit I mean the Tide Hunter and the DK. So we're gonna forward a bit. And I think BSJ died over here. Yeah. He was talking about his lich <laughs> that didn't get the cast off. I was spending every drop of my gold in search of a Dusa right now. And of course we didn't get any Dusa. This is a troll run. Notice how I don't have an Enigma. Usually you need an Enigma or a 2 star Lich to be winning or fighting the troll run with these. But because I don't have the Enigma and my Lich is 1 star, it's going to be very slow to charge up. And by the time Lich cast his channel first, most of my units will be dead over here. And I was looking for a chainmail over here because with the chainmail we make an AC and AC will basically secure the game first. Turns out the game says no, no chainmail for you, but two blink daggers. I was like little like little annoyed, so I was like texting to them, I was like, look, I got two blink daggers. And now everyone stayed over to watch us to finish this game to see what happens. So I know I'm versing the troll player. And I want my Ty to be getting his Ravage off as soon as possible because he's got a Shadow Shaman that's 3 star. And a Witch Doctor that's 3 star. And a DK. Now notice how over here, if we want to comment on whether what he can do for his lineup, what he should have done is he should have left only one Disruptor in the front and he should be leaving the rest of his unit, maybe just Ty and Disruptor in the front. He should be swapping this 2 star task with one Medusa to reduce my magic damage. And he should be leaving the Conquer in the back line because he only needs the Tide or the Disruptor to get the damage off, to receive damage. 
and what he can do over here, if he, if he loses that fight, he can just leave the disruptor, leave a shadow shaman, and leave a witch doctor on the side. Because they're level three, they can soak up enough damage to get an instant cast really early, and a bounce. A cast with a witch doctor or an instant hex with a shadow summon will be devastating for me. But instead of doing that, he's having too many units to be tanking the front line to split the damage from me so the disruptor won't be getting the silence off. And of course, commenting on this, it's hard to say I'm watching this fight so that I want to know if things are working. And it turns out my tide got silenced before he got his ravage off. And looking back here, same thing happened. Although I was commenting on his positioning, it seems like he really worked well for him. So here is what I'm thinking. I need to adjust to him now. Because if his formation is working, I need to adjust. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the units I want to get things off are standing on the front line. I need the laundry to get things off. I need the Deucer to be in the middle. I need the DK to be on the side. I want the Puck to be as far away from the middle as possible, so he doesn't charge up the enemy. I want the Seeker to be at the back line to just protect the Deucer when anyone comes for the Deucer. And over here, the Lich is on the second line, just so that the Lich might receive some splash damage but don't die directly before he gets his cast off. Now, two things. What are, why am I standing here? I'm standing over here. It's, I want to pass the Blink Dagger onto the Tide the moment he's silenced. At the same time, if I pass the Blink Dagger to Tide, after the round finishes, he won't register when the tide attacks him. I also want the tide to have the blink dagger when he attacks the enemy on the offense. So I have two choices. I can choose to give the blink dagger to the tide after the round starts, so he's likely to be dodging the storm while he's stormed. So that's a nice interaction for those that have blink dagger. So if you're in a blink, if you're in a storm or anything, if you pass the blink dagger within the fight, the tide sometimes dodges the, fight, the whole storm entirely and blinks out of it and gets his ravage off. But seeing how much health I have and how little health he has, I managed to give the blink dagger to the tide before the round started. So I want the tide to be blinking on the enemy over there. At the same time, I have another blink dagger. I want to give this blink dagger to my CK. If the blink dagger is on my CK, I want to look over here. So unfortunately, we're very close of winning this fight. And I think because of the three star Shadow Shaman, we actually lost the offensive fight. And over here, I was like, this one hit, one hit is all we need. And after two hits with splash damage, we killed everything. But we did notice that we couldn't defeat him. And that's what I'm worried because if we can't defeat him, any random instant hex will be the end of us if he gets a Medusa or the Tide. I'm positioned ready over here in case if we get a bad RNG hex and I put my deuce a little forward because I want her to get things off. Notice how I'm still adjusting my formations even though my defense was successful because I want to have the offensive powers. So I'm standing next to the DK now. Anything happens to the DK, I want to be passing the blink dagger to the DK so he blinks away afterwards. But what I did forget is my DK had six items already. So looking over here, DK got stunned, I want him to blink away from the boat. I passed the blink dagger to him. He's not blinking because he's already had six items. So I looked over there. So I'm gonna look over to the enemy side over here because I think I secured the fight. And I was like, did we do it? We did it. So over here, notice how after a fight of winning the engagement on the defensive end, I still slightly changed my arrangements. This is because I know I can win but I need a slight adjustment, so on the offense, I have a high chance of winning. So yes, we won this fight, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here to summarize a few things. This was a replay of a higher rank with most of the higher rank players, and most of the players knows what they're doing. And a few things I want to highlight in any basically matchup with players that really knows what they're doing, is that the game will have a few phases, regardless if you play goblins or if you play anything. The first phase is the deciding what composition you want to play phase. Here I opt for the goblins for the early game powers, the early game spikes that is. 
And while I'm holding on to goblins, I want to be open up for any other builds that's a, that are good that comes my way due to RNG. Once I get enough pairs, I'm looking to match my pairs. And here, before I started saving, I went for six two-star units. I don't recommend all of us looking for six two-star units, but what we want to see is five two-star units that are decent, or six units that has a great synergy before we start saving. So this is the first part how we save enough health for the late game. Because although we're saving like everybody else, we're winning while we're saving instead of losing. We are saving a bit slower than everyone else, but notice how after they finish saving, they still need to be rolling, they still need to level up. So they still have a power opening for us to be saving. So round 10 to 20 is the savings round. You can choose to save early if you're on a losing streak, or if you, you can choose to save a bit later to secure your winning streak. And because I choose to save later, I managed to get a winning streak, simply because everybody is saving while I'm getting power-ups. Now, round 21 is my first spike. Round 21 for me is the round I start rolling for units. And it is also the round I decide this is the build I want to go into. So before that, I can still be open for changing builds. And after that, I have a pretty solid build. So round 20 to 25 is when the game filters out who is the strongest and who can hold down the most variety of lineups. This is when the 8 players you match will have the combinations, the combos, the mage combos, dragons, or like oaks. They have, they have the combos ready, the elves, they're coming. And if your matchup doesn't match up with them, you'll be losing a lot of health, which happened to me as well. So, round 20 to 26, this is when I stayed on level 8 and I jumped to level 9. And with all the matches in this round until level 30, I managed to conserve enough health by spending a lot of my savings. This, for me, in this current matter, I feel that health is more important after round 20. Before round 20, health is only a resource for us to get win streaks or losing streaks to build up our economy. Now, the end game, two things to mention. One is that I'm making a particular formation based on the units I have. Usually, I will split out if I have a one star tide, but when I have a two star tide, I'll stay in a ball. And also, I have knights. Knights are stronger when they're together, so the DK can do most of his splash damage. Now, if DK is out here in the open, what might happen is any assassin that jumps onto the DK will take away the aggression. DK will be hitting the assassin, and his splash damage will be wasted instead of hitting the enemy in the formation. Here, enemies are coming into us, and we're hitting all the enemies at once. And this is great, as you can see. Everything's dying because of splash damage. Also, this gives uh, units like Lich a chance to get the cast off before they die. So, I think that's pretty much for the summary. This was a very nice night game, which I trans transitioned from goblins. I still started with goblins, but knowing that I'm hoping for transitions into other builds, I think this will be a very nice introduction to everyone who's looking to just not play goblins all the time. And this guide was focused on when to be spending, when to be saving, and when I think we should be rolling for units. I hope this helps everyone. And, you know, leave in the comments if you have any suggestions. I'll definitely reply and I'll definitely look when I see it. And, you know, please let me know anything that I should improve on. And I'll be trying my best to be giving everyone everything I know about chess. And I'll be making more guys in the future. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.